Welcome back this morning. We're in the book of Exodus. And we're up in chapter 4 now, and God is dishing out some signs to Moses today. Chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. The leprosy sign, or is it? Let's read it. The Lord furthermore said to him, Now put your hand into your bosom. So he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Then he said, Put your hand into your bosom again. So he put his hand into his bosom again. And when he took it out of his bosom, behold, it was restored like the flesh, rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you or heed the witness of the first sign, they may believe the witness of the last sign. So God gives Moses a second sign, and God, uh, Moses obeys God. He puts his hand into his bosom and brings it back. And it's uh, this kind of flaky, the, the best we can tell from the language, it's not probably leprosy. It doesn't sound like any kind of real leprosy. All the commentaries are kind of united saying, well, this really shouldn't say leprosy here. But his hand is very flaky, like flakes of snow. And so that, uh, yeah, that was probably kind of a disturbing moment for Moses. And when he's commanded to put his hand back into his bosom and he draws it back out again, it's all good. You know, we're all back to normal here and happier day. It's kind of interesting. Each of these first two signs involves something being transformed from one thing into another thing. And then back, uh, the third sign will be different. But the second sign is kind of like the first one, you know, rod into serpent, serpent into rod. Here's the hand into a some flaky feature and then back to normal. And this is good, though, because this is the true God. He's, he's, he has creative, actual creative power, and uh, opposed to these, you know, supposed alleged, you know, magical powers that the, the people in Egypt have. Uh, nothing like the creative power of the God of heaven, certainly. Nothing like the superstitious powers assigned to the Egyptian gods. Now, verse 8 speaks of the signs themselves as having voices. That's kind of interesting. Literally, if they will not believe you nor listen to the voice of the first sign, they can believe the voice of the second sign. See, all of God's signs are invested, his symbols, they're all invested with meaning. They all have a lot of meaning. And so, the signs given to Moses are kind of like additional voices. Remember, remember how this begins? Uh, God, you know, I don't know if they're going to really be able to hear my voice. My One of his arguments in, in this train of arguments is going to be, it really can't be me because I don't have a very good speak. I've got some problem with speaking, whatever his problem with speaking was. So God's going to just add voices here. He's going to add these voices of these three signs, and then he's going to add, add Aaron's voice. That's kind of part of his argument there is I just, I, my, there's a problem, there's a voice problem. And, you know, maybe it was that Moses... You know, he'd been away from Egypt for so long, he really couldn't remember the Egyptian, uh, the details of the Egyptian speaking. But anyway, what we have here is that God is giving more voices. God is arming Moses with many persuasive voices. And, you know, God speaks through many voices. But the real question is always, do we really, do we have ears to hear? Because if, no matter how many voices God uses, if we're not willing to listen, yeah, how's that going to turn out? So we've got to be willing to lower our pretensions about how smart we are so that we can hear from the God of heaven. See you tomorrow.